Amen. There's no better place to be. Amen. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all that you've done for me. Blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Come on, let's praise him this morning. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all that you've done for me. Blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all that you've done for me. Oh, blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. For Everybody, please stand and let's praise our Lord. For he has done so much for every one of us. Amen. Oh, blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to pray. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Let's praise him today. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for all that he's done, all that he's going to do. Let's thank him now in advance because of our faith. He has made us sure. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. For blessing me. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord God some praise this morning. God has done so much. His people, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That meant they demise because of their sin. But God has been graceful. He has been merciful. Oh, hallelujah. He has been digging around us. Hallelujah. And he has, oh, hallelujah. He has kept us. And he keeps us every day that he gives us another chance to hear his word. Amen. So we got to thank him. We got to praise him. And we got to give him the glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody, please stand. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Father God, you are so worthy this morning, Lord God. You're worthy all the time, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for just considering us, Lord God. Hallelujah to be your people, Lord God. Thank
thank you for, oh, hallelujah, for teaching us, Lord, Father God, your ways, Lord God. To show us, Lord, Father God, you are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord God. You are the epitome of the good truth, Lord God. So we say thank you. Thank you for considering us to be able to come into your vineyard and graze on your good word, Lord God. That we are sheep, Lord God, seeking your pastors, Lord God. Hallelujah. To be used by you, Lord God, to go and get those that are lost and being strayed, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, that the thieves don't come and steal them, Lord God. You can fight in us, Lord God, to be your saints, to be your people, Lord God. So right now, we say thank you. Thank you for considering us, Lord God, in our stiff heart and our hard heads, Lord God. But you, oh, hallelujah, you're so wonderful, Lord God, that you just consider us, oh, hallelujah, to just continue, continue to go after us and get us right, Lord God. So say thank you this morning, Lord God. We want to praise you from a sincere place, Lord God. And help us, Lord Father God, if we're not there, if we're not right, Lord God. Make us do right, Lord God. Make us come back and repent, Lord God. Make us, oh, hallelujah, just recognize that you are wonderful and that you're the only way, Lord God. So we say thank you. Thank you for giving someone after your own heart that you called, Lord God, that you selected, that you, hallelujah, prepared and put the hot coal on his lips, Lord God, that he may give a sound gospel and sound truth and so oh, sound doctrine. So we say thank you. Thank you for, oh, hallelujah, for all the blessings that we have, Lord God, and all the many things that, oh, hallelujah, that you do that we don't recognize. We say thank you this morning, Lord God. And we go forth in your name throughout this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's stand up. Let's continue to praise God. Let's read the word of God in St. John chapter 14, verse 6. If you're there, please say amen. We say thank you this morning, Lord. Everybody there? Amen. Let's read the word of God. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise if we get ready to praise God.
start in heaven Hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come Thy will be done On earth as it is in heaven Give us this day Our daily bread Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Teach us to become like you and how we pray and what we do. Amen, 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 amen. The kingdom come, your will be done. Hallowed be thy name. Amen, amen, amen. Teach us to become like you and how we pray and what we do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look yeah. like y'all was ready to do a concert. <laughs> Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Offering time. Tides and offering. Amen. Amen. Tides and offering. Are you glad you're saved? Yeah. Glad I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Anybody want to go to heaven? Hallelujah. We're going to heaven. Amen. There you go, Brother Beverly. All right, you're in the hands of our officers, ushers, and mass, mass choir. Woo! No. <coughs> Give. Give. And it will come back to you. Good mass. Press down, shaking together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give unto the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measures, press down, shaking together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give. Unto the Lord, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give unto the Lord, everyone, please stand. Follow the direction of the ushers in the room. Everyone, please stand. Good measure. Give, and it will come back to you when you give 
unto the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give unto the Lord.
This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the love of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the love of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus that hallelujah that washes white as snow. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I'm saved. Glad I'm saved. Glad I'm saved. St. John chapter 14. St. John chapter 14. Thank you, Lord. This month, we're going to be talking about Jesus is the way. And our theme scripture is St. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus is the way. Amen. Jesus is the way. There's no other way to get to heaven. There's no other way than to go through Jesus. There's no other way, y'all. There's no other way. And, and we, we, we need to learn, I guess, learn that and stick with that, believe that, teach that, promote, push that. Amen. There's, there's just no other way. There's just no other way. No other way to get to heaven. If you don't go through Jesus, there's no other way. You won't get there. Amen. And, and he has rules. He has rules. He's got rules. Amen. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 14, verse 6. What does it say? Verse 6. Read it again for me. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man. No man cometh unto the Father but by, me. but by me. If you don't go through Jesus, you won't make it. You won't make it. You got to go through Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10.
Jesus said, I am the way. Nobody can get to heaven without going through Jesus. You can't make it. You can't make it. Amen. I know all of us have heard that and we may have some thought about it. Um, but as I was saying this morning in Sunday school, you can't, you can't get to Jesus without a preacher. Y'all need to accept that. Amen. And a preacher can't do it unless Jesus sent him. Uh, we take a lot of words and we just think we know what the word means. Well, we know what it means when it comes to man, but we don't know what it means when it comes to God. And that's the whole, that, that, that's the whole uh, uh, picture behind being a preacher and being called of God. Because I have to get your mind off of what you think you know and show, prove that you don't know nothing. That, that, and that's the hardest part. Because as I was saying this morning, uh, people read the Bible and they say they can understand the Bible like anybody else. You know, I don't understand how you come up with that. You know, if, if everybody could understand the Bible, wouldn't be no need for a preacher. Amen. Then why do I get up here and preach if everybody understands the Bible already? Then why don't you just stay home, read your Bible, and that's it. Amen. But he made it very clear. He said, you can't hear without a preacher. And he can't preach unless I send him. Amen. Amen. Uh, Hebrew chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 19. Verse 19. Um, let me catch you up without having to read all of that. He's referring back to the Old Testament when people sinned and they had to go and offer an offer. Offering and offering, or a sacrificial offering, whether it was a blood offering, depending on the sin. And they had to do this continually. Well, by the time G when Jesus came on the scene, he did it one time and it solved all problems. So Paul is explaining that when he gets to this point, that's why when he get over into faith uh, in chapter 11, he said, if you don't believe this, then it won't work for you. It's, you got to believe it. You know, and that's the whole thing behind God. So when he get to verse 19, let's read. He say, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. Now, they couldn't get into Jesus or they couldn't, or to God rather, they couldn't get that close to God because they wasn't allowed to go in. In other words, the people, you only had a priest and then you had a high priest. The priest couldn't go as far as the high priest. In other words, the, the ministers can't do what I can do. Amen. And, and, and then I have to make sure I'm ready or capable or in the position to do what God have called me to do. That's why I was explaining this morning about the coals being put on the fire. I mean, on the, 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 the coals being put on the lips of the preacher because when God call a preacher he do something different to the preacher than he do to everybody else because he's got to do he's got to come to me now God is saying because Jesus did something for us we can go boldly now so verse 19 again he said what having therefore brethren to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he have consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. He consecrated it. He fixed it for us. Now, I want you to put something there and go to chapter 9. Same book. We're going to come back in a minute. But I want to explain something to you. Go to chapter 9. So you got to understand. Jesus have done something for us that only he could do. Chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 7. Amen. Um, let's start at verse one. We, we're going to read a little bit instead of me explaining it. Let me let you read it for yourself. Hebrew chapter nine, verse one. What does it say? Amen. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly. 
the, the first covenant. That means when God was with the people in the wilderness, they had rules to follow, just like we do. They had an ordinance, and it was a divine service. It was, it was a specific service. Nobody could deviate from it or alter it. Amen. But it was a worldly sanctuary. Read. Verse 2, he said, What? Well, for there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlesticks and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle is called the holy. In other words, they could walk in the sanctuary like you all and, and, and man have made a pulpit, which is like the holy of holy. That's why we don't let everybody come up on the pulpit. Uh, uh, the, the Baptists, if, if you're not ordained, you can't come up on the platform or the pulpit. You got to stay down here. Amen. Because they're saying you're stepping in the holy of holies. Amen. But now I don't do that because that's been done away with. And that was a earthly. Come on. Read. He said, whatever. Which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot that had the manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. Verse five. And over it. The cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot. He said, I can't put, I can't quite explain that to you. Come on, keep reading. Six, he said, what? Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the priests. In other words, all of you all that's got the Holy Ghost, y'all can come in here and clean the church and vacuum and, and, and dust and do all of that. But it's some things you can't do. You, you have restrictions. Amen. That's the way it was back then. They, was a, they were allowed to go in the sanctuary. They were allowed to do things, but they couldn't go past that curtain. Because that curtain meant you had to have a special task or a special appointment. Come on, read. Uh, he said, verse 7. But into the second went the, but into the second went the, the high priest. Come on, read. Alone. Alone. He was the only one could go and get that close to God. Alone. Once every year. Not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. Verse 8, read. He said, the Holy Ghost. That the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was not. In other words, in other words, God is saying I had not made it clear why I wasn't letting nobody go in there. I just told them. God said, and I didn't explain it because I wasn't going to explain it because y'all wouldn't have understood it. Amen. Come on. Verse. What, what verse is that? Eight. Verse nine says what? Which was a figure. Of the time being present in which we offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that service perfect as pertaining to his. In other words, every time he went in there, no matter what he did, couldn't clear his conscience up. Whatever he went in there and did, whatever he went in there and offered, couldn't make him think straight. He couldn't, he couldn't get it right because I, I had it fixed where he couldn't get it right. Amen. Now I want you to go back to chapter 10. Amen. Come on. We, we, we started at verse 19, right? And now we're at verse 20. Let's, let's do 21. Now remember, their conscience couldn't get right because it was a physical thing. But God said, I got a whole new thing going on now, y'all. I got getting your heart right, which will get your conscience right. Come on. Um, verse 20, he said again. Well, let's do 19. He said what? Having therefore, brethren. Now y'all can go into the Holy of Holies. But back then they couldn't do it. They couldn't go into the Holy of Holies. Come on. By the blood of Jesus. Read. By a new and living way. Amen. Jesus said what? I am the way. Jesus is the way. Come on. Read. Verse 20. By a new and living way. Which he have consecrated for us. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. In other words, Jesus said, I fixed it where all of y'all can go directly to God now. He said, but here's the problem. You still got to come through me to get to him. So if you don't go through Jesus, you can't get to God. He said, no man can go to the father 
No man can get near him except you come by me because the veil was rent. I tore the veil up. But in order to get to God still, you got to go through Jesus. Amen. Now, when he said he consecrated the way, that means he dedicated or he did. Or, or, when you talk about something that's consecrated, that means it's dedicated. Now, God say, if Jesus said, if I done consecrated y'all, I've dedicated y'all to God so y'all can go in there. Y'all can go in now to the Holy of Holy, but just remember, you're dedicated. You, you, you don't have no other responsibility. Your only job is to, another definition for dedicated, devoted to a particular task. Are we devoted? Are you devoted to serving Jesus? Are you devoted to doing it God's way? Another definition for consecrated is single-minded. Are you single-minded? Are you got your mind strictly on God? Are you, are, are you strictly about getting close to God? Because you got to remember, when they went in the Holy of Holy, the whole purpose was to get to God. So God is saying, I fixed it where I want y'all devoted and, and, and dedicated to me. Now, here's the, the word, the definition I love the most. An inauguration. Inauguration. God said, now, I've set y'all up. For a particular job. All I want y'all to do is praise me. You, you hear when the president. He get an inauguration. Amen. His whole job. See people think the president is here to make y'all feel good. That's not his job. That's why a lot of folk don't know what the president's job. Because y'all think he's there to do stuff for y'all. He's there to protect the country. He's there to protect the country. Now. In protecting the country, I got to protect the people. I got to protect the dog. I got to protect the cats. I got to protect builders. I got to protect your money. I got to protect your health. I got to protect a whole lot of stuff. And it's a big responsibility. And sometimes you may think I'm forgetting one to do the other. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But it's a big responsibility. Now, he's a man and that's the world system. But now watch this. God said, I've inaugurated you all to make me look good. I've, I've set you all up and I've devoted you all to proclaim the name of Jesus. I put you all in a position to tell everybody that Jesus is the way. Now, in order for you all to tell everybody that Jesus is the way, you got to be taught how to do this because you don't know. Because you know you didn't heard about Jesus, but you don't really know me. Amen. Jesus said, y'all really don't know me. You may have heard about me, but I need somebody to tell you. Listen, when, the, when the, you, you put anybody in a position where they're in charge, they got to go get counsel from other people in other areas to make sure they do their job right. A preacher is the only one that's authorized to go to God to make sure he can teach everybody how to do the job right. So God said, when I saved y'all, I gave y'all the Holy Ghost. I want y'all, I've given you a new beginning. That's why he said old things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. You knew how to dress. You knew how to wear clothes. You knew how to, to, to talk. You knew how to show love. But I'm showing sure y'all you've been doing it wrong all your life. So let me give you a new beginning. Now, you can come boldly to me. Hallelujah. So when you go boldly to God, what you're really doing is going boldly to God in the spirit. But somebody got to tell you how to do it because you really don't know how to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In other words, God say, I'm introducing you all to a new system. <laughs> Hallelujah. I should have called it a new system. I'm introducing you all to a new system. Growing up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, the little Baptist stuff I did grow up in, they used to tell us, all you got to do is go to church and pay your tithes and you'll go to heaven. We would, now, I, don't, I don't know what y'all learn. I'm telling you what I learned. And the, and, the, and the deacons and the, the, the ministers and all of them, they had babies all over town, but they went to church religiously and they paid their tithe religiously and somebody told them they would go to heaven. And they didn't break that rule because they believed it. Amen. But God said, I got a new system. I got a new and living way. Hallelujah. I don't care what y'all learn. That ain't the way I designed it to be. Hallelujah. Now, John, 
you was raised and you walked and you got out the church and the, and the deacon would light up their cigarettes, they cigar, they had a spit bucket, you know, where they used to chew tobacco and spit snuff and they would walk out and stand on the, 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 the porch, so to speak, of the Baptist church and nobody questioned it because that's what they were taught. So we in a listen, we got a new and living way. We got a new beginning. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. Amen. We, we would go in the church. The kids sat in the back. The, all of the women sat on one side in white. All the men sat on the other side in dark suits, whether it be gray, black or brown. They couldn't they, 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 they couldn't wear that. Baby. No red pants. They wouldn't let you in the church door. You could be the biggest drunk, but you can't walk in the church with that on. Long as you come to church and give God some praise, you come to Sunday school, you come to uh, uh, morning serving, you uh, come to night serving and paid your tithes and gave your offering, you was going to heaven. But if you walked in there with them pants on, you're going to hell. And they lived by that. Oh, hallelujah. But God said they were doing it wrong. So I got to get somebody to introduce you all to a new system. All of these different religions been around for a long, long time. We all know it. A lot of us have grew up in all kinds of crazy foolishness. Amen. Amen. That <laughs> the one I grew up was crazy foolishness. But that's all I was taught. And God said, I understand that. But I done ripped the veil now. Can't y'all see clearly? In other words, now that y'all got the Holy Ghost, can't y'all see clearly? Can't y'all see smoking is wrong? Can't y'all see wearing certain clothes is wrong? Can't y'all see not supporting the church? So I don't have to go to church to support the church. Well, if you don't support the church, who's going to support it? I don't know how folk can have be so stupid to think that preachers support the church, preach the servant, pray for you, bury you, give you money, pay your house note, put you in the grave, and I ain't got to give you nothing. Man, so you want a preacher to come in rich, and you want to come in and do nothing. Amen, hallelujah. So they say, I don't have to, so who going to support the church if you don't do it? Do you think a rich person going to come to church? A rich person ain't got much time to come to church because they need to keep making money seven days a week. Oh, hallelujah. God said, I got to introduce y'all to a new system. Here's where the new system starts. I'm going to break everything about you because ain't nothing about you right. And the only way you're going to get to God, you got to come through me. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I done paid the price where you can talk directly to God. And I got a preacher that's going to tell you what you can and cannot do. Come on. What verse we stopped at? Um, 20. Let's read 20 again. He said, by a new and living way, which he have consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh and having a high priest over. You still got a high priest. Over, oh hallelujah! That ain't me. In the in the in the spiritual it is, but I'm talking about in the flesh. He said that he had Aaron for that, right? So Aaron is the only one. Now Jesus then came. Up, let's read a little bit more. Then I can explain it to you better. He said, "Let us draw near with a with a with a in full assurance of faith." So Jesus is the high priest, right? I'm just an under priest. I'm just a minister. I don't have to go in there no more because he's going to give me the instructions to give to you. But now you can get a little closer. Why? Because you're going through Jesus. But here's the problem. Folks want to get in there, but they don't want to go through Jesus. Now, here's where the other problem come in. You can't go through Jesus and let somebody tell you how to do it. Amen. In other words, you can't talk to God. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to get real good. Come on. You can't talk to God unless Jesus tell you how. And Jesus is going to use a preacher to tell you how. Because he's the only high priest. I am just a priest. And then y'all are the people that's coming trying to get to God. So Jesus said, the only way you're going to get there, you got to go through the priest, which go through the high priest, which is me going through the high priest. Come on. Verse 22. He said what? From the top. Let us draw near with a true heart, full assurance. First of all, if you're going to come to God, you got to make sure you're right. What do you mean? Stop sitting, no. Come and be honest. Can you come and be honest? Because 
He already know what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you did. He already know. Can you be honest enough? Can you come and say, Lord, I need help? Can you come and say, Lord, I did such and such last night, last week. I'm thinking about doing something tomorrow or today. Can you come and be honest? The problem with humans, y'all lie too much. Y'all lie too much. And me and Tommy were talking, and I promised somebody I was going to be uh, do something. And I said, when I got off the phone, I was working on my car. I just smooth forgot. Tommy said, is that a lie? I said, of course that's a lie. A lie. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. And, and you know, Tommy just laughed. I said, Tommy, I, to me, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a straight up lie. I didn't do it. Amen. Did I mean to lie? No, but there's no way in the Bible where God said, if you don't mean to do it, I'm going to wink at it. He said, I ain't winking at your sin no more. I'm through winking at your sin. If you know that you're supposed to be honest, then be honest. I'm sorry I forgot. God forgive me. The brother forgave me. But the problem, it makes me not forgive myself. And I'm going to work harder at when I say I'm going to do so. I got to move right now because I know John's behavior. If John is working on them car and he promises something, if I don't move right there, it's a done deal. I'm going to forget. I know that. In other words, y'all know your behavior. Y'all know how you think. Y'all, listen, that's why a lot of times when you text me, I won't read your text. Because if I read your text and I don't do it right then, I'm not going to remember it. So, <coughs> it'll flash on my phone, say I got a text from so-and-so, I ignore it until I'm ready to do it. Because as soon as I read it, the, 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 the highlight disappear. trust me, it's gone out of my head. Now, that's me. You got to know your personality. So when God say, uh, come with him with a true heart in full assurance, you got to come to God being honest, knowing who you are. Don't listen. Y'all are too busy knowing who you are and acting like you're somebody else. You need to, oh, thank you, G. You better know you. Stop trying to make me act like you. I'm not you. You not me. Listen, you are you and I am who I am. And that's the way I'm going to orchestrate my life. But we all got to do it in what? Full assurance. Come on, read what else he said. Having our hearts. Watch this. He said over there, they didn't have nothing to stir up their conscience, did they? They didn't have nothing to stir up their conscience. Right? But they had an evil conscience. But they didn't have nothing to stir up their evil conscience. We got something to stir up our evil conscience. It called the Holy Ghost. Y'all know when you're thinking wrong. Nobody got to tell you when you think. You know when you're thinking wrong. You know when you're about to do something. You know, and you know, you come to God and say, Lord, I am sick of so and so. Listen, God say, if you come and be full assurance and knowing that I can help you, but if you ain't honest, I can't help. Oh, hallelujah. You got an old thing. You got a conscience now. You are not walking around. Well, I didn't know that was a sin. Seriously? You didn't know that was a sin. Many times your pastor didn't preach it. You didn't know it was a sin until the preacher that Jesus sent to you told you it was a sin. I go back to something simple. So y'all, for all y'all that have forgot, I done told you, showed you last Sunday, you can't talk about the president of the United States. You go to hell for that. Amen? Amen. Your conscience is going to remind you of that. So when you do it and say, well, the Lord understand, what did the scriptures say? Your conscience, your conscience tell you, you can't do that no more. You can't do that no more. So what you going to do? You going to walk around and say, well I, well, I didn't know. You didn't know what? You didn't know what? You know you can't do it. But your co-workers are still doing it. Your family is still doing it. Your friends are still doing it. What are you going to do? You're going to stand there and be quiet, huh? But God say, evil communication corrupt good manner. How long do you think you can do it? How long do you think you can listen to something that's wrong and don't get involved in it and say amen? How long can you do that? Oh, hallelujah. Talking about Jesus. Told you it's going to be a rough month. Jesus said, I'm the way. And if you don't go my way, amen, which way are you going to take? I, I had a flyer yesterday in the single seminar, which was great that you all single and you missed it. Y'all should have been there. But I had this little figure, fig, uh, fig, figure of a man or whatever it was, and it had like five arrows. And I, I asked him, I said, so which road you going to take? 
They say the straight one. I said, well, who told you that was the right one? None of the rows had, none of the arrows had nothing on them. I said, so which one are you going to take? Somebody say the right one. How? Why, why are you going to take the right one? How many, how many churches you can go to? How many churches out there? Which one is the right one? How long it took you to find that out this was the right one? How many of you, you came over here and got baptized and went back to the other one? You came over and got the Holy Ghost and went back to the, so which one is the right one? Which, which arrow going to take you the right direction? Amen? Talking about a new and living way. So how do you know which one is the right way now? See, people want to run around and say this church and this church. Now you know how you're going to know it's the right one? When you get the Holy Ghost, you're conscious. No conscious. See, here's where the problem come in, y'all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You've been consecrated. You've been devoted. You've been, you've been uh, uh, inaugurated. You, 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 you got a renewed mind. God said, don't tell me you don't know what's right. Because you read it. You know you can't do that no more. You know you can't cuss no more. You know you can't smoke no more. You know you got to obey your pastor. You know all of these things. So why is it hard for you to do this? And then you want to say, well, I, I don't think what your conscience tell you. Come on, read that verse again. Because we ain't read it all yet. He said what? Let us. Come on, y'all mumbling. Read. Verse 22 said what? With the true heart. Full assurance. Having our heart sprinkled from it. Having our heart sprinkled from a evil conscience. I thought it was okay to drink. Folk can say whatever they want. See, I know y'all laugh. I told you, I used to, I used to pray over my beer before I drank it. Because I thought it was right. Them, 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 them Baptist deacons and preachers told me it was right. We pray, I, I can't say everybody did, but I did because I wanted to do, as long as I'm doing what's right, I'm cool. As, as ignorant as it sounds. I thought it was right. You know, my mama told me old women give you warnings. <laughs> when I was young, I had older women chasing me. If they were five years older than me and more, I wouldn't touch them because I really believe what mama said. Old women give you warnings. I wouldn't get no warnings. <laughs> wouldn't get no warnings. Y'all know when I found out that wasn't true? I was 29 years old. But guess what? I didn't find out it wasn't true until I was 29 years old and in the church. What did God protect me from? Amen. <laughs> Probably did. What did God protect me from? What am I saying? Listen, God say, John, everything y'all done may have been some good, but it's time for y'all to get the new way. It's called Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ don't say you're going to get Warren John if you sleep with an old woman. He said, I'll kill you if you sleep with any woman that ain't your wife. So I already know how to obey. We all know how to obey in certain areas, in certain things. But now we all had it wrong. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But I got an evil. Listen, I had still had an evil conscience. And every, listen. Somebody say, well, every religion can teach the something right. I take that. I take that. But when you get the right way, what you going to do? You going to stick with the old one? Are you going to stick with the old one, John? Are you going to stick with the fact that you can drink? Just go to church and pay your tithe. You going to stick with that when somebody that made something new? In other words, you got the new way and you going to stick with the old way? Listen, old ways are passed away. Why are you going to stick with something that's old when you know you got a new way to do things and you know it's right? Why you know it's right? Because you're conscious. Got to remember, they didn't have a conscience then to know what was right because all they did was what the preacher said. And God said, but I got a new and living way. Come on, from the top, verse 22. We're going to read it all this time. He said, let us do what? Draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, having our sprinkle from an evil conscience and our bodies, our bodies washed with what? Pure water. 
We've been drinking fake water. We've been taking showers with some false water. We've been taking baths. I'm talking about we've been told, we've been preached with some watered down doctrine. We've been preached with some dirty word. But now we got the right word. Because now you have been, you got a new beginning. You've been introduced. We're being introduced to a new system. What's the system? Holiness. What's, hallelujah. What's the new system? Holiness. Come on, let's go to Romans chapter 5. We've been consecrated. We've been dedicated. We've been, we've been, we, we should be devoted to this new task. Come on, uh, Romans chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now, I know you ain't going to get it all today because uh, it's all month. It's a whole month. But you got to get it in your head. You got a new system now. I know we all wore clothes, bought clothes, did things to make us look good, feel good, make us, what's that, uh, self-esteem and all of that stuff. I got that. We all did that. But it's a new, it's a new way over here. Your self-esteem should be based on the fact I'm saved. Your se- oh, glory, hallelujah. Felt like shouting on never. Your, your self-esteem should be now, I got God. I got Jesus. I don't need nothing else. Like I was telling y'all this morning in Sunday school, why in the world would you want fifty dollars? I give you fifty dollars, and you don't use fifty dollars to do what you want to use it for. Pastor, I need fifty dollars. I need to buy a dress. I give you fifty dollars, and next week, what happened with the dress? I didn't buy it. Where's the fifty dollars? I still got it. So why do you need fifty dollars to buy some? Why did you get Jesus for help and you ain't using it? Why do you get Jesus for healing and you ain't using it? Why you get Jesus for strength and you ain't using it? Why you get Jesus for faith and you ain't using it? Why you get Jesus for all of these reasons and you don't even use him? You can't use him up. Oh, hallelujah. You can't use him up. He ain't nothing but faith. He ain't nothing but strength. He ain't nothing but hope. How can you stop hope from being hope when that's all hope is? You can't. You, <laughs> Jesus said, God said, you can't weary me. You can't get all of me out of me. What, so use him up. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, chapter 5, verse 1, the book of Romans. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. God said the only reason they ain't killing y'all is because of Jesus. Read it again. We got peace what? We got peace through God. We got peace with God through. God said the only reason they ain't killing y'all, John, is because of Jesus. The only reason you ain't confused, John, is because of Jesus. The only reason you ain't sick, John, is because of Jesus. The only reason you ain't. I was I was driving this week and um, I was driving this week and um, uh, I'm supposed to have a nurse or somebody up here, right? So when I reach for a towel, they got one for me. So that chair's for y'all. So I don't know who's on duty, but that's where you're supposed to be sitting. But anyway, I was driving this week, and um, I didn't have friends. I, I tell y'all all the time. Growing up, I, I, don't, I didn't have a friend all through my childhood that I could say I had a friend. So I, didn't, I don't have nobody uh, that I ran with one person or two people. I didn't have that. I was always by myself. If I wasn't with a girl, I was with a, maybe somebody doing one particular thing. After that, we, we didn't hang out together. From my family to other people, nobody. So today, I mean, this week when I was driving, I was driving and I had this moment when I realized, I said, man, I'm 60 years old and I'm in pretty good health. And I said, I wish I had somebody I could call to reminisce when we was little. You know what I'm saying? I don't have nobody I can call and say what we went through as a child growing up. 
you know, in Mississippi, in the, on the dirt roads and climbing pecan trees and, and fishing and running from water moccasin and, and, and playing in a haystack where we hear rattlesnakes everywhere and none about nobody's getting bit, you know, and, 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 and uh, going stealing pecans out of another person's yard and they shooting at us and nobody got shot and, 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 and making, making, making fishing poles out of cane uh, uh, sticks and, you know, riding, making a horse put the cane stick put a rope you know riding a horse you know I said I don't have nobody I can call and laugh about this I said because I remember that like yesterday and I'm 60 years old and I said man Lord it'd be nice if I had somebody I could call and just reminisce over how we played baseball and you know got up early on Saturday morning and played baseball all day long come home at night knowing your mama and your daddy gonna whoop you but you do it anyway because you love baseball so much, you know, or when you when you, you know, during the summer months when you couldn't get a job, you know, you would just go and sit at the rec center and play basketball all day. You know, we sharing, you know, buy one burger. We cut it into three pieces and share the burger. I, I don't have nobody because I, I didn't have friends. I may have done that with somebody, but I don't have a friend. I don't have nobody that I kept in contact with my whole life that I can pick up a number and dial. I don't have nobody like that. And I thought about that for a minute. And I say, I said, Lord, that's kind of bad. It's kind of bad. Because most people, they always got a friend they can call up that they kept in. I don't have nobody I kept in contact with like that. Maybe my son's mama, her name is uh, Sheila, but, you know, my first son from my street day, but... I'm not going to call her because I don't want me and her to get no relationship like. But other than that, I don't have nobody. And the only reason I can keep up with her is because I'm a son. It ain't like I kept up with her. It's just because we have a son. So we talk, you know. He get us on the phone and all three of us just laugh and talk. But I don't have nobody like that. And I, I was thinking about that. I said, Lord, that's kind of bad. That's kind of bad. So when I, when I read this scripture, he said, justify peace through God our Lord. I got somebody now. Jesus. Amen. So when I ride in my car and said, Jesus, remember when we? I don't say I. I said, Jesus, remember when we? I said, Jesus, remember when I was sliding out that tree? And, 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 and see, people back in the old days, they didn't want you in there, pecan, peach, or a tree. They would wrap barbed wire around it. So you can't climb it. And one time, you know, you know kids, we're going to figure out a way. I climbed the tree and I slid down the tree and the barbed wire just split my leg open. Blood everywhere. And all I did was wipe the blood, put some dirt on it, and picked up all my punk on. <laughs> Listen, I, I said, Lord, you remember when we, I said, you remember when we, we, what a, oh, glory, hallelujah. You know, and I, I, I me personally, I felt like Jesus was enjoying the conversation because I didn't have nobody else. Yeah. What am I saying? Listen, I can go to God. I can talk to Jesus because I got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. What am I saying? So all of y'all walking around talking about your lonely, you see how you can get out of that lonely state? Talk to Jesus. He was there when you went through all of that. He was there when nobody, oh glory, he was there when you didn't have nobody to comfort. We got a new and living way. I don't have to call up a friend. All I got to do is call up Jesus. Listen, hallelujah. Listen, you got a friend in Jesus. Why don't you use him? Why you got him and you don't use him? Use him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I go through different pains in my body, and I just say, Lord, what are we going to do about this pain, Lord? It, it hurt. What we you ain't got to call nobody. Jesus, he said, I'm your doctor. Well, how about fixing this, doc? Because this is hurting. This is aching me. Amen? I, 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 was, I was, and I still ain't figured this one out, but I was, I was stuffy. In my nose. I hope I'm helping somebody, y'all, because we got, listen, I can go to God, all I got to do is go through Jesus. So when I talk, I ain't going to talk to God, I'm talking to Jesus. You say, you say you can get to God for me, well, how about this? So I blew my nose, and when I, because I was stuffing, I blew my nose, a whole lot of blood came out. I said, okay, so what that's all about, Jesus, you trying to scare me or something? 
Because you know, I'm ready to die. So if, if something's wrong with me, please take me on out of here, Lord. I'm ready to go home. Amen. Blew my nose five minutes later. Wasn't no blood. Like, okay. I guess I ain't going nowhere yet, huh? What am I saying? Y'all have these moments of discouragement and pain and fear and you think you sick. Why don't you tell Jesus, all right, are we getting ready to boogie? Are we, listen, talk to him. See, y'all think that's weird, but see, that's why y'all can't depend on him. That's why y'all don't know how to get to God because y'all don't trust what you got. Why have Jesus and you don't use him? But y'all don't call up the doctor. Well, doc, I think I need to come and see you. My nose bleeding. No, Jesus, my nose bleeding. What we gonna do about this? You are my doctor, hallelujah. You are my friend, hallelujah. You are my help, you are my strength, you are my hope. Why am I calling anybody? I don't need to call nobody else, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I told this guy, I'm getting to my point here. I got all money, listen. I told this guy for the tent that I would pay him to do certain things. He's bugging me. I'm going to go by and see him. So, uh, um, Dr. Anthony, the man that owns the lot, he called me. He said, uh, Pastor Portis, he said, so what's going on? Are y'all still? I said, yeah, Dr. Anthony, I couldn't do nothing until the city approved for me to do this because I need to make sure before I go getting custom tents made that what my restrictions are. And the lady called me and told me, don't worry about it. She said, just pay your thing and I'll talk to my people. We're going to make it work for you. Amen. So that's one blessing. So then Dr. Anthony called me and I told him, no, we're going to do it. I said, I got a guy that's going to clean. He said, no, don't mess with them guys. He said, I already paid somebody to clean that up for you. I said, but he said, no, leave them alone. It's already clean. I ain't been, I'm going to go by there. He said, I've already cleaned it up for you. Amen. So I ain't got to give him nothing. Now I got to go by there and tell him, I ain't giving you nothing. The owner told me he done cleaned it up already. Amen. I'm sorry, but he, he took care of it. What am I saying? Trying to figure out how I'm going to give him some money that I ain't got to give him. What am, oh, y'all missing what I'm saying. So I'm worried about getting money to pay somebody and God that already paid the bill. Because I'm constantly saying, okay, Lord, how are we going to do this? Lord, what are we going to do? How are we going to do? What we need to do? I don't know what I'm doing. Talking about, watch this, and this is what I'm getting. A new way of winning souls. But I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea how to have a tent meeting. I don't know what to do. But Jesus said, don't worry, John. You don't, you, listen, you're going to get more folks to God because you're coming through me. What am I saying? I'm trying to, I want y'all to see everything you do, go through Jesus. And you'll be amazed of the accomplishment you can get to. Now watch this. Come on, let's read. Come on, from the top, chapter 5, verse 1. Are y'all with me? Y'all better stay with me because you're going to get lost in a minute. Verse 1, hallelujah. Verse 1 says what? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through. I'm justified by faith because I believe God can do anything. Not everything, anything. Not everything, anything. Because everything is anything. And if I know God can do anything, all I got to do is have faith. And the only way God can do it is I have faith in Jesus Christ. Read verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into the grace. Listen, Holly. The only way you're going to get God to move for you according to his word is to believe he can do it. Grace is the gospel. You got to remember that. Look for how he put this. But whom also we have access by faith into his grave. Wherein? Why did you get saved? Who told you how to get saved? Who told you how to get saved? Grace. Who told you how to get the Holy Ghost? Grace. Who told you? Who told you to do anything or how to do anything that you do? Grace. That's why you standing, right? I'm standing on the standing on the promises of Christ. My son. Where, where you get the promises from? Right here. You standing on it. Then why ain't you using them? 
Why ain't you using the promises that you claim you standing on? And the only way you can stand on them is through faith. That's why last month y'all really need to get faith. Listen, faith is the substance of things. I am hoping for a great tent revival and I'm standing on it and it's, I'm going to get it because God is making it happen systematically because I have substance. I know it. Oh, glory. And I'm doing it through Jesus. So preacher came to me and, and trying to act like about getting some money. I ain't having no tent revival for money. I'm going broke having a tent revival. But I'm going to get some souls and I'm going to feel good. Every time somebody come down and speak in tongues, I got paid. Every time somebody go down in Jesus' name, I got a good check. Every time somebody say, I'm bringing my life back to Jesus, man, I got, I got a bonus. Hallelujah. Every time somebody come and say, I want to do better, that's another bonus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I saying? All I'm looking for is soul. Because why? This is, now here's the problem with y'all. That's what we've been dedicated for. Right. Are y'all with me? He said, a consecrated. In other words, I've inaugurated you all to go get other folks. Listen, hallelujah. I've dedicated. Listen, I died so y'all can get other folks, John. Listen, I got y'all in a new way to get other folks. I got y'all in a new beginning to get other folks. But y'all think it's all about all this other stuff. No, 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 no. The only reason I died is so y'all can bring other folks to God and make God happy. Hallelujah. But you seen the thing is all about. It ain't about you. It ain't about you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. You want to get to God? The only way you're going to get to God is to understand what I've inaugurated you to do. I've inaugurated, I've given you a new system on how to win souls. Because all of those other ways where we thought we was going to heaven didn't work, did it? We had a lot of systems, didn't we? And to be honest with you, a lot of y'all, just like me, believed a lot of that foolishness that folk put in us. But something with just maybe one or two things. I never, I never really questioned if drinking was right or wrong. Why you think I prayed over it? I, I, I thought it was fine. I said, God made alcohol. Sound crazy, don't it? I'm just telling you how I thought. Y'all thought some crazy stuff too. But we're just going to talk about minds. Right. Amen. So I didn't think it was wrong. I had a, a, a guy in the Air Force. That boy didn't drink a beer or nothing. I said, how you wake up every day? Don't drink a beer. You got to drink something. He was a Christian. And he said, he said, I don't want it. I ain't supposed to drink. I didn't believe that. I believed them old deacons that was drinking. They say, as long as I went to church. I believe them old deacons that told me as long as I don't mess with God's house and God's people, you're going to make it to hell. I believe that. I believe that. That's why I stayed away from church girl. That's why, you know, when we grew up in the South, you, you going, I, I don't went and stole pecan from somebody's tree and got to pass that old Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. We get close, Beverly, and all of us get, get it's answered because now we got to pass this church. We just got through stealing. Amen. We were scared because we were told you pass God church and doing something wrong. He'll strike you down. We ain't passed that church. Amen. So we would, we would be over there. Oh, amen. Who going to go first? We were literally scared. Then all of a sudden we break out running and we would run with all. <laughs> it's funny. Just, we, and we just to pass the church, we'd be out of wind. Kids. That's just how hard and fast I believe that. I was afraid of God. Oh, hallelujah. What are you saying? I got a new system. I got a new system. I'm still afraid of him. Still, but I know all I got to do is be honest now. So, oh, glory. All I got to do is tell the truth. All I got to do is when I know something is wrong, don't do it. Because I got a conscience now. And then watch this. And now, as long as I do things through faith, not only being afraid of him, he can kill me. Be reverencing him and loving him, he can help me. The same God. But I got to do it through Jesus Christ. See, too many people want to bypass Jesus and try to get some. The Muslim want to bypass Jesus and get to God. Buddha want to bypass Jesus and get to God. 
Church of God and Christ want to bypass Jesus, get to God. But you say they say Jesus' name. Well, okay, they say Jesus' name, then why ain't they getting cleansed in Jesus' name? Why ain't they getting Jesus' spirit? Why are they coming up with something different? What am I saying? They are preachers, but God didn't call them to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. And then, come on, verse 2 from the top. By whom? Also, we have access by faith into his grave, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory. I'm rejoicing in what God got for me. I don't want to dwell on that section. Come on, verse 3, say what? And not only so, but we glory in... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute, Jesus. You mean to tell me I got a glory in tribulation? Yep. You got to have fun when you're going through tests and trials. Uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph was, uh, he got tased. Is that the right word? Tased, where they shoot, you know, they shoot. But they do it different when they train you. They clip, he said, they clip it to your heel, daddy, on one side. And on the other side, they clip it to the back of your shoulder. And they hit them boats. Joseph. Those who were watching, that boy got stiff as a board and just fell on his face, but they got people holding you. And when I saw that, I said, I can do that. I said, Lord, I can do that. So I called Joseph, or he called me. Joseph said, I was laughing. I said, Joseph, boy, you stood another three inches. He said, oh, pop. He said, that hurt, man. I said, he said, I said, Joseph, I can do it. He said, you dad, you dad. I said, dad. He said, yeah. I said, Joseph, I can do it. He said, dad, you think? I said, yeah, I can do it. He said, dad, you have a heart attack. You can't take that. <laughs> he said, I said, Joseph, he said, I carry one with me. I said, when I see you, tase me. I bet you I can tell. He said, Pop, I ain't going to do that. Kill my dad. I said, Joseph, <laughs> watch it. I said, Joseph, I believe I could take it. Glory and tribulation. I'm willing to take some pain and show you I'm a man. Yes. <laughs> I still say, live, I can take it. It probably going to knock me down like it knocked him down. But I'm going to get up and pull my pants up and say. And, and that's what we did in the military. Listen, in the military, we said, I can do that. Remember I told y'all when we came dressed like, I said, we went in those guys chambers like, yeah, I'm going to do this, man. I'm going to do this. And you go in there snotting and spitting and choking and you stand in there crying so I can take it by ready to pass out. What am I saying? We got to get with God so I can take folks talking about me. I can take folks really killing me. I can take folks putting me down. I can take folks tearing up. I can take it. Shoot your best shot. Amen. So God is saying, this is a new and living way. This is a, take it. Take it. Bow your back and take it. What am I saying, saints? We getting ready for a tent meeting. You better learn how to take it. You better get ready for folk to talk. Because we in there telling everybody, you going to hell if you ain't baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and they going to say we're crazy. Can you take it? Can you take it? Because you're going to have to take it. Come on. He said not only in tribulation, knowing that tribulation work is what? God, watch this. God is, Jesus is amazing. He said the only reason I'm putting you through tests and trial so you can take anything. The only reason I'm putting y'all through all of this trouble so y'all can learn how to wait until I decide I'm ready to do something. Because all I'm teaching you is patience. All tribulation teach you is patience. You know, one thing about getting hurt, one thing about getting hurt, if you don't go to the doctor, you wait for that pain to go away, don't you? When, 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 the, when, when the boys, Jeremiah and Joseph, would get burned, my wife would always put ice on, put nothing on it. She didn't listen to me, but I still would tell them, don't put no ice on it. But it soothes it. I said, as soon as the coldness wear off, the heat comes back and it still burns. Let them take the burn and be through with it. What happened? Listen, I told y'all, if y'all don't think I'm lying, check it out. When you get burned, don't put ice on it. You won't blister. You won't blister. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. I ain't taking it. I can't do nothing about that. But I can tell you how not to prolong the injury, prolong the pain, because now when it blister, the blister, the skin ain't got to come off, don't you? Now you got a sore. Just take it. All you're going to do is turn black. Skin gonna turn black. You won't blister though. 
the coldness, the moisture gets under the skin from the heat and causes what we call moisture. Well, I'm looking for the word, uh, 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 not vapor, but that's what called. Listen, take the pain. Then next time you get burned, you can take the pain. Next time you get burned, you don't even know you burn. Somebody look at you and say you burn. Oh, how did I get that burn? Because you learn how to deal with it. Patience. Listen, what am I saying? In life. Listen to me, saints. In life. Saved or unsaved, you're going to have problems. Being saved don't eliminate your problem. When we show you a script over to Peter, he said, y'all going through the same thing the folks in the world are going through. The difference is the folks in the world do some tricky to get out of it. And we won't use what I would trick. We got a trick too called Jesus. The world uses their tricks to get out of trouble, don't they? They go to jail, they get in trouble, they lie to get out, don't they? They, get in, they, they, need, they need some money, they go do something illegal, don't they? Amen. Listen, we need money, what should we do? Talk to Jesus. We get, listen, we, if we get in trouble, what we supposed to do? Tell the truth. How old go? Y'all ain't listening to me. The only way you're going to get out of all your trouble, he said, in the midst of temptation, I give you a way to escape. How do you get out of it? Tell the truth. Be honest. Swear to your own hurt and change not. Don't do nothing slick. Because when you do something slick, now you got a double whammy. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, the way you eliminate a lot of your tests and trials, just live holy. You don't have to pay a traffic ticket if you don't speed, do you? You don't have to go to traffic school after paying a ticket if you don't speed, do you? Because the law is for the lawless. So y'all tired of wasting money on traffic ticket? That's a simple way to this. Try the speed limit. Hallelujah. Y'all, listen, y'all, y'all, y'all tired of evil come, y'all tired of folks talking about you. That's a simple solution to this. You reap what you sow. Stop talking about folk. Nobody talk about you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all tired of having enemies? The Bible said, love your enemies. You won't have no enemies with you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you. See, y'all don't understand this new system. This is a new system. You've been consecrated. You've been inaugurated. You got the conscience now to do all of this right, but you won't do it. But isn't it amazing? It's amazing. Y'all know the rules, but you keep going back to the other rules to get these results. To my knowledge, every time I got drunk, I had a hangover that made me sick. So now I get drunk with Jesus and I wake up, I don't have a hangover that makes me sick. So now I want to have fun. I want to have fun. I want to lose my mind. I want to have fun. I want to, I want to have fun. I want to go. To, I want to have a party. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to let the choir sing till I start foot loose and fancy free and start dancing. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to have a party, but I'm going to feel good and I ain't going to have no regrets. Cause I remember in that party, I had regrets. Y'all, oh, glory, hallelujah. I'm going to teach you something today. I'm, I'm, I'm glad y'all are quiet. Somebody told me, say, uh, Elder Porter, you got to understand, when they're quiet, they're listening. Because I want y'all to listen. Y'all, are, y'all got the solution to everything, but you won't use it. And you got it a new and living way. What's wrong with this way? Come on. That's where you stand, ancient. He said what? Knowing that tribulation work in patience. And the patient do what? How many, how many of us in here to learn that we don't have the money we want every time we want the money? Aaron clapping, you know that, huh? And, and sometimes waiting on money is a, it's a big test, ain't it? It can be a big test waiting on money sometimes. But you waited, didn't you? You didn't have no choice, did you? Because it didn't show up, did it? So how many times now when you really need money don't show up, you got experience, huh? What do you say? Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. But ask some of these kids that ain't used to waiting. Amen. They act like the world is falling apart. Oh, mama, if you don't give it to me, we ain't going to survive. <laughs> but, but now they got experience, huh? Wake up. They got experience, huh? They got experience. I got experience. One time I was $25,000 behind in paying the rent. I told y'all the story. Mr. Botox told me. He came to that door. 
He said, he said, he said, John, I came to that door and I was going to embarrass you and tell the saints you were 25,000. He said, I walked up to that door. He said, and I heard you say, hallelujah. He said, now this is him talking. He said, something told me, get away from the door. Don't you ever come back. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Botox, so I turned around and I ain't coming back over there no more. <laughs> And now, granted, when I was going through that, I was nervous. Because, man, I'm going to get kicked out. But I'm saying, Jesus, you, you got me in this. What you going to do about it? I'm nervous, but I'm still talking to Jesus. The man don't bother me no more. Amen. He don't say a word. Amen. He don't say a word. I would go to his house to pay the rent. He would make me sit down and have lunch with him. And everybody couldn't understand. He got this black man, black boy, coming in here and forcing me to eat dinner or lunch with him. And then I got so bold, I walk in, Mr. Bo, what we eating today? He said, I don't know, Marie, what we eat? We'll sit down and we'll eat. He always said, John, when we eat, no business talk. We would just shoot the breeze. Here's a man like 20-something years older than me. I owe him plenty of money and it don't even bother him. Because God then fixed his brain where he can't bother me. Oh, I, 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 I ain't told y'all a whole, I ain't never told y'all all the story. Listen, what am I telling y'all? Ain't no need of you having Jesus if you ain't going to use him. Now, I got experience. Watch this. He said, Pastor, what all that? Experience. Patience. Waiting on God. I got experience. Can't nobody do nothing to me unless God want them to do it. That's a hard thing. What am I saying? Ain't none of y'all been burnt like that. Remember I'm talking about the coals? Have y'all lost houses? Lost houses, can't pay church rent, ain't got nothing. Y'all ain't, listen, God ain't burnt y'all. What am I trying to get you to see? That's why God got a call, folk. Because he said, when, he said, John, when I send folk through stuff, I can't have a novice up there. I got somebody got to know what it's like to be struggling and keep on praising me. I got to get somebody. Listen, how, watch this, watch this, watch this, y'all. All these folks we're going to run into, what are they going through? Why are they living on the streets? Why are they coming in just for some help? What kind of test and tribulation they going through and we can't help them do nothing? Because we've been living high on the hog ever since we got saved. Well, the Lord going to bless you. He's got a blessing round the corner. You sitting out here telling folks that, that's having big trouble in their life and you telling them they got a blessing around the corner and you got them excited and they waiting to look around that corner 10 years later and it ain't turned the corner. No, you better tell them you got Jesus and you better call on him. You better depend on him. You better understand he ain't going to give you everything you want, but he'll make sure you got everything you need. And the only way you're going to get what you need is to get baptized in his name, get his Holy Ghost, live holy and trust in him. Otherwise, you ain't get nothing from Jesus. The devil going to give you some stuff and fake you out because you want to go back to the old system. You need to stay with the new system. What am I saying? We're in a new and living way. We can go bolder to the throne. But listen, now that you can go bolder to the throne, you can find out you don't need a whole lot of money. You don't need a whole lot of friends because you got Jesus. You got God. Holly, you done found out I don't need all of that junk because I got Jesus. You done found out I don't need a brand new car. I just need to be able to get to work. Even if I walk, ride a bike, get on the bus, hallelujah, bum a ride. I got Jesus. I got a new system. Nobody got to bamboozle me no more. Oh, hallelujah. Experience. Experience. Nothing like experience, man. Ain't nothing like experience. Boy, I love my tribulation because they give me patience. And in the midst of getting patient, I get experience. Watch this. And after experience, I get hope. Thank you, Lord. I'm just sitting back waiting, Dre. Kind of like I'm sitting back like this. I'm waiting to see my next church building. Because I, I, listen, I done, I done did everything I thought I should have done to get one. God keeps saying, nope, nope, can't have that one. All right, I ain't doing nothing now. <laughs> you keep telling me no there, I ain't doing nothing. My wife sometimes, she said, honey, did you see that building? 
<laughs> yeah, baby, I seen it long before you saw it. But God said, she showed me one. I said, okay, Lord, this one got to be it. They tore that one down. Soon as we trying to get it, then they tear it down. They sit there all these years. Soon as we didn't cry about it, the bulldozer come through. Okay, Lord, that ain't, that ain't it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Micaiah told me about one. Micaiah, I went by and looked at it one time. Now the place looked shut down. And this girl that still come, oh, they have church all the time. I looked over there. They ain't having no church over there. I said, all right, Lord, I ain't coming back. And sometimes I go down the street and I go, I should swing through. And God said, I won't say God said, my conscience said, come on, John. How many times we done been through this? Now, if you go inquire about it, we're going to bulldoze it. You can't have it. Oh, so I'm like, okay, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't mad. Sometimes, sometimes I do kind of get a little attitude, but I understand. I ain't doing, but I know God got something. Wait a minute. Supposing I ain't going to ever get one in the rapture come. Supposing we stuck here. Hallelujah. But I got a hope. Ain't that's what he said? Read it. He said, first thing you get is tribulation. First thing you're going to do is struggle. The second thing you're going to do is learn how to wait on me. The third thing you're going to get some experience waiting on me. The fourth thing you're going to wait to see what I do. Ain't y'all, y'all don't ever get excited just waiting to see what God. Listen, y'all ain't excited about this tent meeting. Do y'all know how long I've been praying for a tent meeting that I've never experienced? Do y'all know how long I've been praying for a health, fitness, well, wellness uh, uh, meeting? Never look at him. Twenty years in, he show up. Hope, hope, and he just laying everything out. The owner says, it's yours. It's any time you want it. The city said, do what you need to do and we'll make it happen. Hallelujah. They, listen, what, what else could you ask for? Listen, and we ain't through getting blessings yet. Because every time you, I go to the next day, there's another blessing. God said, I got this for you. 20 years in? 20, 20 years? And you think I'm not excited? Ho, 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 ho. See, all y'all ain't been around for a while. Oh, y'all ain't been around long. I've been hoping. What, what, kind of, what kind of revival I say I want it? I want one bigger than the day of Pentecost, don't I? See, y'all don't remember me asking about that. Because y'all don't forgot. I ain't start, I ain't forgot yet. I said, I want mine bigger than the day of Pentecost, and I want it bigger than the Azusa Street. I don't know how big neither one of those were. I want to beat that, Lord. Hallelujah. What am I saying? I got a hope that God going to give me what I want. Huh? And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I'm going to wait all the way till kingdom come. Amen. What are you saying? Ain't no need of me getting Jesus and don't use him. Hallelujah. All of these ideas I get, you get, who you think they came from? Come on, come on, come on. Verse 5 said, well, hope. Hmm. I ain't ashamed. Hope make it not ashamed. Are y'all listening to me? Hope make it not ashamed. Why are people ashamed? It, it take me back to my wife, auntie, my auntie now. Say, we used to preach to poor folks like that, John, Lisa, but them folks ain't got no money, so we had to do something different. Hmm. Hallelujah. I want poor folks. You know why I want folks that come in with nothing? Because I want to watch God give you something. I want, I want you to come in with nothing. Because I want to watch God clean your mind or clean your spirit. I want to watch God give you an education and give you a job. I want to watch God make you prosper. And all you did was everything that was right. Hallelujah. I want to watch God turn a bum into a millionaire. I want to watch God turn a dope head into a college graduate. I want to watch God to turn a prostitute into the owner of our own business or his own business. I want to watch God turn a dog, which is a male prostitute, into a man with a wife and children. And it is right now. I want to watch God change people lives because of this new system. That's what I want to see. That's my hope. And I'm not ashamed waiting on that. I'm not ashamed waiting on God to bring somebody out of the muck and the mouth. I'm not ashamed watching people get in their right mind. I'm not ashamed watching folks get off uh, uh, medication and trusting God. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. 
I'm not ashamed. Oh, hallelujah. I like this new system. You know why? Because the new system is a consecrated system. The new system is a dedicated system. This, 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 this system is dedicated to getting us right. Who don't want to be right? I want to be right. Ain't, don't, ain't you seen that song? I want to be right. Make me right. Make me right, Lord. Listen, I like, listen, I watch God making y'all right. I like it. I like it. I love it. I love knowing where you come from. Now you sitting here in your right mind. I love that. I love that. I love. I love to see where you come from. I love that. I love to see folks come in here talking about how they would abuse, misuse, mistreated, and now they sitting here in their right mind, praising God, yeah. reading scriptures, telling folks how good God is, not yeah. ashamed about their past life, because you know why? It's past. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen, we got to tell folks where we've been so folks can know where we come from so they can see why we happy about where we are. Yeah. Listen, I ain't got no problem telling you what I've been through. I'm glad to tell somebody about Jesus. The Bible said they overcame because of the word of their testimony. The only the only way out is to talk about what you came through. The only way to get there is to tell folks where you come from. And I'm not ashamed. Come on. And hope. Hope that make us not ashamed. Y'all got hope to do something. It's making you ashamed? No, no. My hope don't make me ashamed. My hope make me proud. Proud. Glad in whom I serve. Because it's a new and living way. What am I saying? Because I'm going through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to get to God through me, John, is you got to go through some stuff. You want me to give you another scripture? All that live godly. All that live godly. All that live godly. One more time. All that live godly. What's going to happen to you? All of y'all that don't want to suffer, that's because you ain't in Christ. All of y'all that hate suffering, you ain't in Christ. All of y'all that don't want to deal with suffering, because you ain't in Christ. Because if you're in Christ, you're going to suffer. If you don't want to suffer, you ain't in Christ. So all of these prosperity preachers, they ain't in Christ. All of these preachers that tell you your pie is in the sky, you ain't in Christ. All these preachers say your blessings is on the way, you ain't in Christ. All the preachers that tell you God wants you to prosper even as your soul prosper, you ain't in Christ. Because my God, the way I know, told me that if I stay in Christ, if I follow Jesus' way, I'm going to go through some stuff. And that stuff is going to make me better because uh, listen, tribulation work is patience. Patience is spirit. Spirit is hope. Hope that I'm not ashamed of Amen. so wherever I am in Christ I'm just as happy because I ain't ashamed right. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ come on read hope that make is not ashamed because oh it get good now because what the love of God The love of God is shared abroad in our heart. Listen, if we going to do this right, we got to have the love of God in our hearts and we're going to share it. We're going to share it. We're going to share it. We're going to give it. We're going to encourage and let folks know. Folks still don't don't believe I was an alcoholic. You don't have to believe it. Take my word for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see what God can do for you. Hallelujah. You see what God can do for you. God, listen, watch this. God can make you not be afraid of death. You're looking at your pastor. He ain't afraid of it. Some of y'all still shaking in your boots. Listen, hallelujah. You don't have to be afraid of it. Somebody said, I'm afraid of dying. I ain't afraid of dying. I don't die no more. Right. I died once. I ain't going to die no more. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. So we're going to have folk that going to come up for prayer where well, you know I'm sick and I got cancer and I'm afraid of dying. Are you afraid of dying, honey? Yes. Would you like me to show you how to get over the fear? I'm going to share it, the love. I'm going to share it, the love. Of you want me to show you how to get over the fear? Yeah. Come on, let's get baptized in Jesus' name. Well, how that's going to work? Do you want me to show you? I'll show you now. You can't question you said you want to get over the fear of death. I'm going to show you how to get over it. Get baptized in Jesus' yeah. name. So, okay, let's say she or he get baptized. She said, I'm still afraid. I, that ain't all of it. 
You got two more steps. What's the next step? You got to get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Yeah. Listen, so let's just say he get the Holy Ghost. Ah, oh, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But I'm still afraid to die. I need to go to the doctor. That ain't. You check out. I said two more steps. You got one more. What's the next? Stop saying it. That's a lifelong process. Now, how can you complete a lifelong process if you're going to die? Let me educate y'all. Listen, God wants y'all to make it to heaven, don't you? So why would God kill you when you're doing the last process? Y'all missed it. Hallelujah. Why would he kill you and you in the last stage to Holy hallelujah. Man, y'all make me want to throw my glasses away. How, why would he kill you, Aaron, and you in the last step? He the, you went through step one. You went through step two. So why are you in? You just got hired to fire. Some God we got, huh? Who want a God like that? John, you got phase one. You went through the interview. Phase two, you went through the, what, what that orientation training. Phase three, you on the job making money for me. Why would I kill you? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Why would I kill you? Why would I kill you and you're making money for me? In other words, John, Angela, why would I kill you and you're saving souls? You were showing folks how much I love them. And I'm going to tell you. No, I'm going to suck every energy out of you. I done invested money in you. I'm going to work you like a dog. I'm going to pay you good, but I'm going to work you like a dog. I'm going to work you like a slave, but you're going to eat good. You're going to live in the master's house. Oh, hallelujah. Because you're going to share in love. Listen, you share in love. That's all I want from you. Why would I kill you? Hallelujah. You know, here's the funny thing about God. Everybody, everybody that's in the Bible that did great work for God. He told them when they was going to die. Go research it. He told David, you get ready to die, man. Get your house in order. Moses, come on up in the mountain so I can kill you. I'm going to let you look and see Canaan, but you ain't going over there. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He told Joseph, Joseph, you're getting ready to die. Tell your family when they leave, take your bones with them. Paul! You got to go to Rome. I got to kill you, Paul. Paul was so sure of his death, he wrote a letter and said, listen, I ain't going to talk to y'all no more. This is my last letter. This is my last conversation. I'm dying tomorrow. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus! Time to go to the cross. Oh, oh wait a minute, Dad. Oh, You talking about tomorrow? Uh-uh. That, that ain't happening. Nevertheless, I'll do what you want. I'm dying tomorrow? Oh, Lord God, no. All right, went the third time. So, Daddy, I really got to die tomorrow? Yeah, about this time you're going to be dead. All right, come on, let's get this over. Let's go. Come on, y'all. Here I am. This is who y'all want. Listen, what am I saying? Y'all worried about dying? Let me help the brother and sister out. You ain't dying until you've done what you're supposed to do. Now, if you shucking on the job, you might get fired. I don't mean I'm going to kill you, but I might fire you. Because we're in a new and living way. We got a new system over here, y'all. So y'all see why another reason I don't worry about dying? I'm doing too much for God for him to kill me. Why would God take out one of his best soldiers unless he threw with him? I know I ain't walking around living in sin. I know that. I know I don't go around practicing sin. You think God going to take me out of here? When he done put in my head to do what he want me to do. Amen. Watch this. Now let me comfort all of y'all doubting Thomases. I've had a long standing prayer with God. I said God don't send me folks that don't want to work. Send me folks that want to work. If they, if they don't want to work send them somebody else. Send them, you can send them to another church. I don't, I don't want bums. That's why I told you seniors, y'all stop all of this, this sickness and sitting around talking about you aching. You better get up and move. You better get some faith because God wouldn't have sent you to me if he didn't want to use you. He, gonna, he got something for you to do. So you need to stand on your feet and stop the foolishness. Amen? Because otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't, y'all can think what you want. Me and God get along pretty good. Lord, I don't need bums. 
I don't want bums. I want folk that want to work. Now, watch this. Some of y'all, I still got to motivate you. That's the love of God. Share it abroad. I got to stay with you. Because, listen, in your back of your mind, you really want to do right. So, God said, I'm going to pull it forward. I'm going to keep pulling it. I'm going to keep pulling it because you want to get there. And John said, he's willing to deal with some lazy bum till I get them right. So, you're going to get right or you're going to flee the coop. In other words, y'all don't know nothing about that, huh? Chickens flee the coop when they don't want to do right. I know y'all ain't chicken, y'all sheep. In other words, y'all going. Some, some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all, some, <coughs> some of y'all sheep, y'all go outside and I got to, you know that, 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 that rod, the sheep with the hook, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all don't know the purpose of that, what you reach out there and grab them on stiff neck sheep and snatch them back in, right, Sister Twyla? You know, some of you got to go out and just keep snatching them. Come on, come on, come on back in here. They stay in for a while, then they, I'm going to get dip back in here. God called them stiff neck. Much I snatched on her neck, she ain't mad at me yet, because I ain't broke it. When I break it, she ain't going nowhere. She ain't going to get smart no more. I broke Beverly neck. He ain't got smart sense. Amen. I broke a lot of y'all neck. But some of y'all neck a little harder than others. That's all right. My stick don't break. Amen. I'm going to keep snatching you. And when your neck break, now you're going to stay over here because I'm the only one can patch you back up. Amen. Come on. Come on. I'm almost through. I'm having fun. Come on. We're in chapter 5. He said, let's, let's finish verse 5. I ain't preaching tonight. Come on. He said, and hope. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is. Come on, ministers. Come on. Let me see if anybody won't pray. Listen. 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 I keep telling y'all, God is getting us ready for this tent meeting. Y'all need to get ready. So all of y'all that's bucking and kicking and afraid, trust me, you ain't going nowhere just yet. Watch this. Look at the death rate of Church of Apostolicity. Cold water. In the bottle, yeah. Stop moving for a second. Listen. Look at the death rate of Church of Apostolicity. Look at the death rate. James, Angela. Outside of my wife, y'all the only one that's here that's been here a long time. Look at the death rate. 20 years, look at the death rate. Look at the death rate. You know why God ain't killing us? Because he got something for us to do. Why would he kill you? Amen. He's still pulling more folks in because we ain't had enough yet. But we getting enough to do what he wants us to do. We're just about there. He got a few more he want to pull in. But we just about there, y'all. To do what God want us to do. Now why would God set us up to do a magnificent work and then kill some of us? Amen. God, said, I don't, God said, I don't want two or three hundred. I just need that faithful few. I just need the few that's willing to work. I, I was thinking today. Amen. That's okay. I don't want no prayer. Ain't nobody getting prayed for. Sit back down. Listen. I was thinking today. I was thinking today, I said, I had to call my wife and Sabrina in. Now, my wife and Sabrina do a whole lot of things here at the church. They just do too many things. And when I, as I called them, and um, I was sitting there thinking, I said, Lord, why I got to call them? I said, I ain't got nobody that can do some of this stuff. They said, the body of Christ, your body got a whole lot of parts working. I, just the blood vessels, I mean, just the, the blood alone with the red blood cells and the white blood cells, not counting the muscles and the bones and the cartilage and the hair and the eyelashes and the arms and the fingers and the toenails and the toes and the fingers and the hair on your body. We got a whole lot of parts working. I can't keep up with everything. I can't afford to pay no secretary to do a lot of the things that other people could do. And I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. So I was talking to the Lord, my friend. I said, Lord, why is it people in the church won't work? Y'all so worried about y'all little funky jobs. Funky jobs. 
as a country way of saying something God can take from you, then what you gonna do? Listen, y'all got the Holy Ghost. Y'all done been through new converts and y'all do one thing, maybe two things. Amen. Y'all don't want to get off work and go up to the church. Y'all want to get off work and go home and sit out and get fatter and lazier. Why you don't want to come up to the church and, and fold some papers and, and staple some fans or file some paper? Why you don't want to do that? This is a new and living way. You've been dedicated. Amen. You've been inaugurated to do stuff for God. And then y'all don't want to do nothing. I got to keep using the same people. Some of y'all, 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 y'all pathetic. Y'all been in the church all this time and all you do is one thing. And some of y'all don't do nothing. Amen. Some of the saints, as soon as I ask them, they own it. Letitia sat over there and didn't press hardly one key. But she sat over there and I watched her getting her fingers back in order. She told me, Pastor, I can't do it. I said, let me ask you a question. I don't remember how I phrased it, but I basically, would you do it just because God asked you to do it? She said, yeah. I said, well, then do it. She over here ready to do it. She ain't embarrassed. She ain't standing about how y'all feel. God summoned her to learn this again and get on it. Amen. And she's doing it. Y'all may say, oh, that she didn't pray. She got more nerve than you got. You can't, even, you can't even come up here. I'm fussing now. And I was going to let you pray. God said, no, straighten them out. Because we're in a new and living way, y'all. This is a new system. I don't know what the old church system you went talk to you. This is a new system. Why is it we can't do for God? We need everybody working. God didn't call you over here to sit over here and look handsome and cute. Because that's impossible. You ain't going to never reach that. God sent you over here to work. He said, work while there's day, cause night cometh and no man can work. What am I saying? All y'all that are saved and you know you can work and you can do things. And, and, somebody, and then y'all want to say, well, pastor, what you want me to do? Okay. All right. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to dismiss you. If you really want me to tell you what I want you to do, you come and tell me. Come and ask me. When I tell you, if you give me any look, any words of saying no, don't ever ask me nothing again. I'm going to tell you politely, get out of my face. Don't ever ask me again. Because if you want to ask me what to do, I can tell you what to do. And now when I tell you what to do, in my mind, it's God telling you what to do. So do you really want to know what God wants you to do? Come and ask me. Come and ask me. Now, you got to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and I got to know it. You and God can know it ain't good enough. I got to know it. Everybody with me? I have to know it. You can tell me all you want. Well, God know it. Okay, well, then go tell God to make you come in here and do something in this church. And then when you show up and I tell you, you can't. So let's clear that up. Because if I'm going to be the priest under the high priest, I got to know my job and what I'm doing. Now, some of y'all haven't finished new converts. And so I'm, I'm very limited in what I'm going to give you because dealing with working in a church, you got to have a, a, a level of patience and love and long suffering. And you got to be able to handle my personality. Otherwise, you won't survive. I'm not mean, I'm direct. I'm forward, I'm, I'm direct. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. And I ain't, I'm not interested in your feelings. Your feelings don't mean nothing to me. Everybody need to understand that. Jesus' feelings don't mean nothing to you. He told the dead, he told the man, if you go bury your dead daddy that you love so much, you, so much you can't help me. He said, if you love your life more than you love me, you can't help me. That's the new system. Are y'all with me? We're going to talk about this. That's the new system. The system is he come first. He come second. Guess who come third? Jesus. Guess who come fourth? Jesus. So where, where do you fit in at? You don't. You don't. Come on, let us stand. Who opened up? Come on, you can close in prayer. Y'all can get prayer tonight. Y'all want prayer? Then, if y'all want prayer, come back tonight. No. Uh -huh. Who on duty? Thank you, Lord. 
Go ahead, Brother Barry. All COA members, amen, just, just be encouraged, amen, that there's a greater purpose. God saved us for a reason. I, yesterday, I went to a firearm training, and no, I did not. It, it was very expensive. It was like $640 for this course. But that came out of my own pocket. There's no way that I'm going to charge God for all the many things that he's done for me. And when I think about, and my purpose is, is that the instructor of the class asked everybody, what's your purpose for doing this? Asked everybody when to cross. This is after we qualified and everything. And I said, because God told me, asked me to. The reason why for me is because God wants me to do whatever he wants me to do, and this is how he wants me to do it. Everybody else, he was correcting them, saying, well, if you're doing this, you should do it for money. He told them strictly, he said, because you're not law enforcement, you're doing security. Mm -hmm. And if you get a firearm, that's like an addition, like a bonus thing. It, you know, it kind of creates an incentive for you, so you make more money. And that's what his whole purpose was. But I was like, no, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? What about Jesus? Yes. And, I, and it took me all the way back to my first interview that I had. I was listening to the sermon, and I remember going in before USC, before Cal State LA, before anything else that this old brain tried to retain. And what other people would consider blessings, and they are. But I remember going before an interview, a panel interview, and they said, we're going to step out this portion of the interview, and we want you to gather your thoughts for something that you can present to us. Anything that you know really well, I want you to present it. And I said, the only thing I know is Acts 2.38. And I preached to them. And I told them, I said, if you ain't baptized in Jesus' name and, and filled with this spirit, with the Holy Ghost, you're going to hell. In an interview. Boldly. No shame, because that's all I knew. And now I got other things in my mind, my education, and, and I still ain't employed. I'm a contractor, but I'm not the goals. We all have our goals, but God saw fit in the, in the midst of that, me being bold in his name. He hired and gave me favor and gave me that job then. And I'm just thinking, like, Lord, I would have so many different results if I was just more bolder. If I just exemplify you. Lord God, you're so merciful. Thank you. Lord God, you, you're so wonderful, Lord God. We really have to search our, our hearts, Lord Father, and know why. Just be honest. Why are we doing this? We know your purpose, but Lord, what is ours? Is it in line with you, your will, your way, Lord God? What you have in store for us, Lord God? We know how magnificent you are, Lord God, but are we going to live up to the magnificence? Lord, Father God, we say thank you for your word today, Lord God. Let it fall on good ground, Lord Father God, and let us really search our hearts, Lord Father God, because there's a greater purpose. There's so many out there that... Hallelujah, that our testimonies can encourage, Lord Father God. There's so many people, Lord Father God, that need to be saved, Lord Father God. There are so many people that need you, Lord God, to hear you, to see the truth, to hear the truth, to be the truth, Lord God. And you are the answer. You are the way, Lord God. And you are just, hallelujah, using us, Lord Father God, because we know we're not worthy, Lord God, but thank you for choosing us, Lord God. And we don't want to be cast away, Lord God. We want to be, we want to be useful servants, Lord God. And just remind us, Lord Father God, take us back to our first love, Lord God, which should be you, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. And encourage, and, and encourage those, Lord Father God, that are really striving to be honest and be faithful, Lord God, and be righteous, Lord God. Help us all, Lord Father God, to live up to your standard of holiness, Lord God, because that's the only way we're going to see you, Lord. We say thank you for everybody in attendance, Lord God. Continue to just help us, Lord Father God, because we know, Lord Father God, we can't do anything without you. And we just lift up your name this day, Lord Father God. Let us just go forth this day, Lord God, 
putting you first, Lord God. Whatever you have set up and planned for us throughout this day, let us go ahead and be obedient, Lord Father God, and do your will. You will bless us, Lord God, and give you all the blessings and the honor throughout this day to praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.